here. You see there are the poles. Here is our land. Well, we're at a little slice of heaven right here in the American West. We're in Birch Creek Valley, Idaho. We're here at Mandalay Ranch. We own four grazing allotments. They total 70,000 acres. We're working here to build something that I have waited my whole life to do. I am the only person in America to ever receive a permit from the Forest Service for Wild Horses. The horses are going to roam freely and they are gonna be the forerunners here in helping to build ecosystems out on our public rangelands. This is the headquarters for our rewilding project in Birch Creek Valley. It's a pilot program to show the rest of this country and our government how rewilding can benefit everybody. This is a good place for rewilding because it's the desert steppe and uh, there are available niches for large herbivores and horses are very, very hardy. What we're trying to do here is recreate to the degree that we can a situation in which the species that should be here, that evolved here, that are part of the original ecosystems that used to dominate this region are reconstituted. We have been preparing the four grazing allotments in Idaho. When our allotments are ready next spring, we are going to allow the horses to go out onto these 70,000 acres of our permits and they will live year round and we will monitor them. We are going to be moving the needle forward. Oh, do you hear them? Yep. Do you hear the little prairie dogs? Yep. We are in North Dakota at the Silbernagel Ranch. We are with our students from the Cornell University Brooks Policy School. They are here to learn all about the value of rewilding and the ecology around all of our work. Paul's model here is on his private land. And what makes this so important is that he uses the horses to help him maintain his lands in a healthy way. And he is a successful farmer. I'm uh, supporting as many animals as anybody else's per acre, but I'm not letting the land deteriorate or go backward. We're trying to get it to go forward. Paul is a mentor to me. The work that he does and the way he does it is something that I hope to mimic. The horse originally comes from the United States. And actually, the grasslands you see here, you could say they remember the horse as the, the species that generates this habitat, this ecosystem. Horses are a keystone species. Horses eat the grass to the top third, the grass grows and biodiversity grows. They're hindgut fermenters and they move seeds differently on the landscape. And so the pollinators and the insects and the small mammals are going to benefit. Soil microorganisms that have all the hard jobs in these ecosystems by virtue of bringing them back they're going to be able to support plant life that has disappeared from this region. This is the controlling valley of the corridor in between Yellowstone National Park and the Central Idaho Wilderness. To the degree that we can reconstitute it, our ambition is to create a corridor for wildlife. Our expectation is that over a period of years, we're going to recreate the conditions that used to exist. There's fences currently on that land from 50, 60, 100 years ago. We're gonna take those fences down and it's the first time in over a century that these animals can go where they're supposed to go. But there's a problem. Wild horses that are free on the rangelands are managed by the Bureau of Land Management. Bureau of Land Management is managing them by making them extinct. Gather plans, roundup plans, have been the way they've managed horses for 50 years. That's not management. The government is rounding up 19,000 horses this summer and this fall. There are 80,000 at least in holding. It's $120 million of federal tax money. Management of a wild species is water, grass, it's habitat preservation, it's genetic preservation, how the animal uses the range. And when you ask BLM for the equation and how they determined what they call appropriate management level, 
they can't produce an equation because there is none. From range to courtroom, we've won some great precedents. We've just opened the door through the courts to begin actual management of our wild horses on the range. We're trying to filter policy into the Bureau of Land Management's management of public rangelands. We are very excited about the fact that this project will be the blueprint for the government and we are able to get the science and the data to show them the value of wild horses on the public range and how all these animals work together. If we ever start thinking everything's good enough, we fail. It's your future and my grandkids and their kids. I want to know I did the right thing. We at Rewilding America now know how complicated and difficult the wild horse crisis has been. But environmental rewilding is the solution. It is the solution for the horses, it is the solution for the environment, and it is the solution for the taxpayer. All we need now is to work together to create proper policies that value horses, humans, and habitat.